Yeah, welcome back to Business Incorporated. Zimbabwe's government says it is holding 321,000 tons of maize in strategic reserves. This is over half of its optimal requirements and enough to last three months. According to the Agriculture Minister, more than 4 million people require food aid this year after the southern African nation experienced its worst drought in the quarters of century, which has worsened economic woes. The Agriculture Minister, Joseph Madi, said in a statement that farmers delivered 207,000 tons of the staple maize worth $81 million to the Strategic Grain Reserve with a balance made up of imports. The Grain Millers Association states that Zimbabwe consumes an average 100,000 tons of maize every month. And now the U.S. elections is expected to impact not just the stock markets, like we talked about earlier on in the show, but also the commodities market. Oil prices were stable this morning as financial investors and traders were cautiously positioning themselves for a win by Hillary Clinton in the U.S. presidential elections. Amaka Ajebu is a research analyst with the Financial Derivatives Company Limited, and she joins us in the studio here. Thank you so much, Amaka. Thank you for, for having coming me. on the program. No problem. Now, let's talk about the U.S. elections and how susceptible uh, the commodities markets could be to the outcome of the elections. Yes, so um, right now, the mark fine, um, excuse me, sorry. Right now, markets investors are watching to see the way um, the elections are going to take. But right now, it's only dollar denominated assets that would be easily susceptible to the outcomes of the elections. So, um, and also currencies that peg their, their, their currencies to the dollar would also be susceptible to the events from the elections. So, yes, that's basically it's in the markets. We've seen oil prices actually been affected by Hillary Clinton's choice yes. of a presidential candidacy. But will this be reversed if um, Trump wins? Trump wins. Yes, so Trump is as you say, said with uncertainty. And the markets don't like uncertainty. So we would see um, the weakening of the dollar in the markets due to this uncertainty. And when this happens, dollar denominated assets like oil become less expensive and you see increased demand and higher prices. So this is what we would so see what is in the market. So your election outlook for the commodities markets in general? So like I said, uncertainty um, pulls investors away. So if Trump ends up being the winner of the election, then um, investors would restructure their assets and pull out from dollar-based assets. And then this would um, inevitably cause a decline, in, an increase in demand and an increase in prices. What about gold? Anything to affect gold? Yes, yeah, so gold is a safe haven asset. So in periods of uncertainty and high risks, investors tend to switch to safe haven assets like gold. So we, would, we expect to see an increase in the demand for gold and an increase in its price. Okay, are the events from the election to transcend into the Nigerian commodities markets? Yes, um, we expect the, to feel the effect of the election through the effect on oil prices. So when, um, when the results come out, sorry, we would see if, or if Trump wins and if uncertainty takes over and if demand and prices react to this election. Still talking oil prices, uh, this time uh, taking a look at what, what Russia is saying about uh, cutting back on output as planned by OPEC. Mm. Will this in any way affect the prices? Yes, so um, Russian support is very important because Russia and the US are the top non-OPEC producers of oil in the, in the world. So Russia supports will go a long way to help boost prices. But then we have to understand that the US was the main contributor to the commodity price reversal in the market. So the oil price decline in the market was mostly attributed to the increase in production in the U.S. So without the U.S. support, we can inevitably see a decline in prices as we go on. So U.S. support is actually important for the long-run effect on prices. So as we coast home to the end of 2016, do you emphasize 
anything, any development in the crude oil market to impact on prices? Yes, so the OPEC November 30th meeting is very important in the list of events to come this year. So with the production cuts, we should see, you know, a recovery in prices towards the end of the year, but also the U.S. participation is very important, so this would also factor in. Amaka J. the research analyst with the Financial Derivatives Company Limited. Thank you so much for coming Thank you for having on the me. program. So the African state-owned energy company, ESCOM, is celebrating more than 400 days without power rationing or what is called load shedding, as it is often referred to. Now, presenting the generational and operational results for the year ended uh, September 2016, the chief executive of ESCOM, Brian Malefi, also said that funding has been secured for the 2016 to 2018 financial years. The celebration was, of course, marred by the inclusion of Mr. Malefi in alleged misdealings with the influential Gupta family energy business, an allegation he strongly denies. South Africa was split by blackouts in 2014 and 2015, owing to problems of infrastructure capacity improvement and coal supply. We have improved generation systems. Uh, the new build program is delivering the plan. Financial profitability and liquidity have been restored. Excess capacity currently exists and is projected to grow steadily over the next three to six years. And we call on customers to, to increase consumption, especially industrial customers, to increase consumption and, uh, and, uh, and we ask them to engage with ESCO proactively <coughs> to take advantage of the excess capacity situation. And still from South Africa, where borrowing costs would likely double or triple if ratings agency downgraded the country's debt to sub-investment grade in the coming months. This is according to the Deputy Finance Minister, Masibi Jonas, who also stated that debt servicing costs were the highest growing item in October's medium-term budget, and along with low growth would force government to cut welfare spending Standard & Poor's and Fitch both rate South Africa's debt on the lowest investment grade level and are due to give the next reviews in December. And Egypt's budget deficit in the first quarter of 2016 struck 2017 narrowed to 2.4% from 2.8% uh, for the same period a year earlier. The total deficit for the first quarter of the year was around 76.8 billion Egyptian pounds. That's an equivalent of $4.47 billion from 78.28 billion pounds. The government's debt interest has reached around 57.18 billion pounds in the first quarter from 50.7 billion pounds. However, subsidies, grants, and social benefits costs, uh, that uh, cost actually fell to 32.09 billion pounds from 37.9 billion pounds. The central bank abandoned the pounds peg of 8.8 .8 to the dollar last Thursday, devaluing it by a third in an effort to attract inflows of capital and crush a booming black market activities in dollars. And with our story, we've come to the end of today's edition of Business Incorporated. Many thanks for watching. I am Bolaji Akumali. Bye for now.